Recently, someone asked me a question in the Samyama, I think. It seems some guru. He said, uh, Tantra is just a way of uh, uh, getting over what? Obsessions. Just getting over obsessions. This is nonsense. We need to, uh, unfortunately, today, redefine the word tantra because it's been distorted by people. First, let's understand this. The word tantra means a technique or a technology. But because the tantra that you're hearing of is a rebound from the American coast, you think tantra means unbridled promiscuity. No, tantra means extreme discipline. It's not <laughs> unbridled promiscuity, it's extreme discipline. Learning to use your body and your mind like you would use some other outside instrument. Like how you would use your computer or a screwdriver. Like that, you learn to use your body and your mind. It takes enormous discipline, not promiscuity not looseness. Tantra is not things, the books they have written largely by Western authors, all kinds of things, no. Tantric texts are of extreme discipline, not of any kind of looseness. Because they're talking about the body, and right now the modern societies, if you say body, they're fixated about reprodu reproductive organs in the body and nothing else about the body. So if you say body, they're only thinking of a few body parts, they forgot the brain. <laughs> because they're only thinking of few body parts, they're thinking about sexuality and nothing beyond that. It is about learning to use the body like a phenomenal mechanism and it is. If you do not know how to use it, what will you do here? If you do not know how to use your physical self and the energy behind it, what will you do? You will have no impact on anything. So this is tantra. Tantra means technology. Tantra means a certain capability. There is no guru without a tantra. If he has no technology, he is not a guru. He can only be a gentle saint who will bless everybody, bless everybody, bless everybody. A blessing has no discretion. Now, if you were a thief, if you… if you met a saint, you would seek his blessing and he will bless you so that you could do your job well today because his blessing has no discretion. He cannot be because that's not in his control. Even the bandit tribes, you know, the Pindaris and people like that, they had their own gods and goddesses, they had their own saints. Their gods always guided them which home to hit today. Very successful they were. They pursued their profession for centuries. Banditry is their profession. So unless you are just the gentle lily kind of si a saint who just blesses and blesses and blesses. I'm not trying to belittle that. They're beautiful in their own way, but they are not of any… they are not for people who are lusting for enlightenment. They are not for those people. They are only for people who are just seeking small improvements in their life. If you walk into your Home Depot, you can make some improvements to your life, isn't it? Yes or no? You can actually. I see every day on the television people come and say, Oh, I just bought this bed, my whole life has changed, it's amazing. <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. 
some <laughs> a bed or a pillow could do that, I didn't know that. <laughs> Have you seen this? <laughs> My whole life has changed completely. So if you walk into the Home Depot and walk out with something that you didn't have, you could uh, change your life a little bit. Life changing, the word life changing, how much of it changes subject to so many things. What has changed is subject to many things, isn't it? Suppose uh, you're cold right now, you didn't have a jacket like me and you got one, it's life changing right now, isn't it? Isn't it so? So is that what we're talking about? If that is so, it is fine, blessing and blessing and blessing. But if you're talking about spiritual growth, reaching to its, your ultimate nature, what is a guru without a capability? You can't call him a guru. So capability means a certain ability to do things which people cannot do for themselves. So if there is… I want this to be clear in your head, if there is no tantra, when I say tantra, if there is no technology, tantra is just a Sanskrit word for technology, not the way you have been psyched to believe. So if there is no tantra, there is no guru really. Because guru means you have to roll up your sleeves, and it's a mechanic's job. You got to fix things. To fix things you must know what's what. You must have some technology in your hand and that is tantra. Is there tantra in Isha? Very much. All across the board, various kinds. But the significance of yoga is that it is not ritualistic. There are two dimensions of tantra, one is you use outside material and stuff to do things, which is ritualistic in nature. The yogic tantra is such that you use only your physical body and the energy system, you don't need any other material. So these two loosely have been classified as right hand path and left hand path. Left hand path use outside material, Right hand path does not use any material, just uses the body itself. Largely, this is yogic tantra, largely just what we do within ourselves. This is a tremendous gift that Agastyamuni offered, that he established a tantric process, one hundred percent rooted in the body, nothing outside. Not one grain of rice or sand is being used to perform all the different dimensions of tantra, everything internalized within the system. This is his gift to us. This is one of the greatest things. In terms of human mechanism, this is one of the greatest things that's been ever offered to us from any source. This is his offering. <laughs>